here from uh, Asheville, North Carolina. Um, actually, to meet with Nassim. Um, this is completely manifested on the side and separate. And uh, anyways, I'll share a little bit first about what I'm doing in Asheville. Um, I'm part of a team called Flux 144. There's about four of us involved. We have a few over UE devices currently working. One is in the process of being patented and going to market. And uh, there's quite a few people in the field of free energy who actually have succeed with working devices and we're in the process of trying to get things to the open market. How, however, as some of you have seen with the movie Thrive, it's a little bit of a challenge. Um, big business does not like us. 40% of the world's economy is solely based in energy. So what happens if you develop a technology that can challenge that 40%? And so we might be talking about science, but Thrive focused on the social aspect quite a bit, because the social aspect is a big part to it. And so what this lecture is going to talk about is the science of sentience, and what sentience really is. And so one of the main problems with science, how we've approached science, is we've approached it from a very masculine, linear point of view. And one of the things we're going to talk about is vortex-based mathematics. Um, I know math is like a huge turnoff for people, but we're going to talk about it from a feminine point of view, a cyclical point of view, and that all the math we've ever done um, up until this new type of math has been linear, it's been quantitative. We're working with quantities. What happens when we start to work with qualities? When you work with qualities, you're working solely with patterns. And from those patterns comes geometry. Because numbers, they don't exist. They really don't exist. So it's a man-made construct. What does exist is geometry. Geometry is inherent within nature. And what we do is we create mathematics to understand the geometry. So I'll start with a story. And it's about sentience itself. And I had a dream several years ago. And I ended up in this, this board room, a bunch of top generals of the Air Force and Navy, and there's these scientists, and I'm sitting at this table. And there's this guy presenting to everyone, sort of like I am right now. And he's talking about uh, flying saucers and what the military is doing to build these anti gravitic aircraft. And he's laying out the theories to everyone. And I start laughing. And everyone turns to me and is like, why are you laughing? I was like, well, it's, it's preposterous what you're saying, what you're trying to do to achieve this. And someone says, well, can you, can you do better? I was like, absolutely, can I go in front of the, uh, the board and talk to them? And they're like, yes. So I went up and started talking. I started talking about vortex theory to these generals and scientists. And when it got to the point where everyone just started being, this is preposterous, this is ridiculous, and got up and started walking out of the room. And a scientist came up to me in this dream, and he asked me, is this what we're going to start working on now? Vortex theory? And I was like, yes, absolutely, it's all about vortexes. And I asked the scientist, what is the smallest particle in the universe? At the time, in the physical sense, I consider that to be a quark. But really, what I consider to be the smallest particle in the universe was consciousness. And so I expected him to say back to me something like cork in my dream. But instead, he said the word sentience. Up until that moment in my life, I had never heard the word sentience before. And in that dream, I made the connection with the word I did know, and that was sentient being. A lot of us have heard the word sentient being, but sentience is a word that we don't use as much. And I made that connection in the dream and thought sentient being, oh, that must be a conscious being. And said, yes, yes, sentience, absolutely. And I woke up. Well, later that day, I went to a dictionary and looked up the word sentience. What sentience means is perspective. And that my understanding of it now is that sentience is the base form of awareness. And that consciousness arises out of higher forms of awareness. And so, let's approach science purely from the notion of perspective. You could say this is like taking an art class, and we're learning how to draw the horizon collapsing into a single point, collapsing into a vortex. 
And so you're studying perspective in this art class. Well, let's take that, that art perspective and bring it into the science. You're merging the masculine perspective with the feminine perspective. And when you start to do that, when you start to do that, you have a more holistic perspective of how the universe actually works. And so, one of the big things I talk about um, with my work is the forces of yin and yang. The polarities that cause our reality to manifest. Expansion and contraction. If you look up at the night sky, you can see it right there. You see extreme compression in the stars and the extreme expansion in space. It's a polarity that's everywhere. Um, however, if some of you have read Junvaldo's work, he talks a lot about the Trinity. Um, other people talk about the Trinity, and that there's always a midpoint between the two. And so I'm going to share this Trinity in physics, and I can share it really briefly right now, in that the Trinity in physics is centrifugal force, an outward spiral, expansion, it's a masculine force, it's explosive. And then there's an implosive force, a contractive force, that's feminine, that's centripetal force, which is uh, if you're riding a bike, that's what keeps you nice and stable. And so there's an inward spiral and an outward spiral. Now what happens when you overlay these two energies together? Oh, you get a circle. And that circle is always spinning. You can spin clockwise, you can spin counterclockwise. That's torque. And so what the scene Haramine did with Einstein's unified field equations is he brought torque really into the picture. And how spin is so fundamental to our reality. One of the things that have put us in the wrong direction is science is this linear perspective in terms of how we move. I might be walking straight this way, and it looks like I'm walking a straight line, but we all know that the Earth is curved. You're really walking a curved line. And so it brings to the table what Einstein said, that space is curved. And the thing to think about in terms of shifting your perspective to start to see that space is curved, is think of the movie Contact. In the movie Contact, they had these three diagrams um, that they got sent to the prime numbers from space through uh, the uh, extraterrestrials, you could say. And there's, it felt like they were missing a piece and they, they couldn't connect it. And that's because they were looking through a linear perspective. Now what happened, they figured out, is what happens if you rotate these three pieces around an axis? And all of a sudden you had a triangular, somewhat radial point of view to see this information and it made sense. And so that, that notion is the major thing that is creating the, the blockage between quantum physics and Newtonian physics. is because how we're perceiving the information. This is all just information. Geometry is a way to organize information so we can experience this reality. So, I think I'm going to go into some vortex math and show you guys what we've been working with in this math. They're very simple concepts of patterns. And it's patterns of growth and decay, yin and yang. It's the Fibonacci sequence. And, 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 and